This is Twit. Let's go to Vino. Speaking of Las Vegas, are you happy that uh, all of those hundreds of thousands of geeks will not be descending on you next week, Vino? Yes, indeed. I bet it's. Yes, I, bet, I bet it's tough for the locals. Well, uh, locals don't go to the strip. That's true. Well, That's true. You yeah. stay away from there. Yeah. 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 Okay. I have one question and one suggestion. Okay. The the question is on VPN. Yes, sir. What are the advantages, and is it worth uh, uh, subscribing to one when you are basically at home and sometimes traveling to other countries or something? That's a really great question because in the past, VPNs sold themselves as the thing you would use when you're at the coffee shop to protect you. Yeah from the hacker wearing the hoodie over there in the corner. Because when you're on a public Wi-Fi, what you're doing is kind of floating through the air. And if somebody has sufficient uh, hacking skills, they can, you know, attack you. Uh, but nowadays, we don't go to the coffee shops that often. So VPNs, there's three primary reasons you would use a VPN. That's the first one is for security. When you're using a VPN, it's a virtual private network, everything that comes out of your computer whether it's on yeah. Ethernet or on Wi-Fi, is encrypted. It's inside an encrypted tube all the way to the VPN server. So nobody in between you and the VPN server can see what you're doing. So the bad guy can't attack your computer. Uh, and another reason people use VPNs is for privacy. So your Internet service... You know, that coffee shop, they may be paying for that free Wi-Fi by seeing all the sites you go to and and, you know inserting ads or selling that information on, that kind of thing. So for privacy and security. Mm -hmm. The third thing that some people use a VPN is to eliminate uh, your geographic location. So I mentioned that your traffic goes to a VPN server. If that VPN server is in the UK, for instance, well, mm -hmm. and you, that's where you're emerging, your public IP address is in Britain. So you could watch Netflix Britain, for instance. They wouldn't know that you're not in the uh, U.S. Um, so that would be another reason to, to kind of move yourself around geographically. A lot of the reasons people use VPNs these days can be handled by other solutions. So, for instance, uh, most of the traffic now on the Internet is encrypted anyway because of HTTPS. That doesn't mean people can't see where you're going, but they just can't see what you're doing. That's encrypted. And that was partly to respond to this coffee shop attack, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, there were attacks. People could, you know, hijack your Facebook and stuff. And so Facebook said, all right, well, we're going to make it HTTPS. And you'll notice as you surf around, almost everywhere you go now is HTTPS for secure and has a little closed padlock. So that's... That's improved security immensely. Used to be maybe you would log into your email and that email password would be sent in the clear through the air for the hacker to grab and save. But nowadays, there's no email service I know of that doesn't use HTTPS. So that's hidden. The other privacy thing is handled a little bit and more and more by browsers using something new called HTTP over, I'm sorry, DNS over HTTPS, an encrypted uh, phone book lookup. So anytime you're on the internet, even if you're at home, mm -hmm. your internet service provider can see all the sites you go to because you have to look them up through the service provider. I want to go to yahoo.com. Where is that? And the service provider looks it up and says, and can't keep track of that. But nowadays, Firefox, uh, I think Chrome is adding this. Safari is adding it will allow you to use a third-party DNS server and have an encrypted channel to them. So now the snoops can't figure out where you're going, which is also an improvement. So increasingly, some of the things that we use VPNs for are just being built in to the Internet. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you to decide how important security, privacy, and geographic location is. Okay, two questions. Number one... When you go incognito on Google to search for something... That doesn't do anything. Doesn't, really? <laughs> it doesn't do anything. All that does... 
<laughs> Google knows where you're going. Your ISP knows where you're going. Everybody sees what you're doing. It's not incognito. It just doesn't save a record of your visit. So no cookies are saved, and it's not saved to the history in your browser. It, your browser is the only thing that is in the dark. Everybody else knows exactly what you're doing. But if I go to, let's say, cars.com incognito, does cars.com know my uh, email address? Or? No, it doesn't anyway. The only thing any website knows is your IP address. And it, you can't hide that because it wouldn't work. So, oh. so incognito does not hide that. You go to cars.com and it sees your IP address. Now, if, as many sites do... Your that site fingerprints you. It can. There's all sorts of stuff it may or may not know. It may or may not share. If, for instance, you've logged into that site and you and they have your email there, it sees your IP address. It's going to say, "Hey, welcome back, Vino. Good to see you again." So, incognito is very poorly named. It doesn't help. Private browsing is not private. Okay. Second question. If I'm in Vietnam or Thailand, and I don't really want to go to Netflix, uh, uh, Vietnamese or Thai, uh, would VPN help me to uh, look uh, yes. or see Netflix movies? Yes. So this is where it's most valuable is if you're – a lot of people do this. You're in another country. A lot of people go to Mexico – for the winter, but they want to watch Netflix US. They can use a VPN. Some now it's possible for sites to detect that you're on a VPN. Mostly, I believe it's through the IP address you use. A good VPN will be going th rotate through IP addresses very rapidly to avoid that. But some sites may say, "Oh no 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 no, you can't come in here through a VPN. We don't know who you are." So, so sometimes it works. It works with Netflix. Uh, uh -huh. BBC's iPlayer they is a cat and mouse game because they really don't want people who don't live in Britain to see those shows because the people in Britain pay a license fee for it. So they will block VPNs if they can, but it doesn't mm -hmm. work with every VPN because it really is based on, is that IP address a known VPN IP address? And uh, if it's not known, they don't know you're on a VPN. I see. So, uh, uh is there any VPN uh, service provider which you would recommend or which you think? We have a sponsor that I have recommended for a long time. That's why I, uh, I took their uh, sponsorship. It's called ExpressVPN. They're very good. I highly okay, recommend so. them because they do the most important thing, which is they don't keep track of your visit. So, you know... The privacy issue goes gets kicked. It's just a can that gets kicked down the road. Now your ISP doesn't know where you're going, but guess who does? Your VPN provider. So you choose a VPN provider, very important, that doesn't log your visits, doesn't keep track of you, doesn't you know, doesn't save what you were doing when you were online. And I know for a fact because I've really checked with them that ExpressVPN is a no log VPN. A lot of companies claim to be no log and are not. ExpressVPN gets uh, audited regularly, so we know they are. Sorry, uh, uh, it's not one of those uh, advertisers which give a 90% discount. Or no, I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> I think Is it if. It's pretty expensive. Uh, it's about seven bucks a month. Oh, that's not bad. You that's don't want bad. a cheap VPN. <laughs> For obvious yeah, reasons. <laughs> They're going to make money somehow. You want to make sure that they that you're their customer. That's you're the, paying, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, my suggestion. Uh, since uh, Apple stores are closed in most uh, yes. uh, cities, yes. you know, it's a good idea if you sort of give uh, tips on using the iPad, say only 10 minutes, uh, we have a whole show. I've got good news for you. My podcast yes. network, we have Mac Break Weekly, which is for Mac fans, and iOS yeah. Today, which is just for iPad and iPhone users. If you go to twit.tv, and it's an hour, it's a regular hour and a half uh, a week show. It's a fabulous show, if I do say so myself. iOS Today, 
And I used to do a show, I, we just stopped doing it uh, due to lack of interest, I'm sad to say, called Hands on Macintosh, where I was doing weekly Mac tips. But you know what? I do a lot of them here. That's probably good enough.